welcome to my channel and today I have a very highly requested reading on who your future spouse is. So, um, and also like any information that I can get on like where you meet this person and blah, blah, blah. But um, this one I feel like deserves a little bit of a special caveat and I hope this doesn't come off as like me being weird or like lecturing to you in any way because I don't, I'm just a person in a meat sack walking around every day throwing ourselves into situations. <laughs> so, um, you know, take this as you will. But um, relationships aren't perfect. So what if I read into this? Like, what if I see some like some hangups and some bad things? Because I feel like I take a very practical view of relationships. And, um, and I think, I think this is a, um, I feel like in this community, this is a very controversial statement, and I'm going to make it. Husbands are better than spiritual partners. Husbands are better than twin flames. And let me tell you why. Because they show up for you every day. They show up for you every day. The man that I am with, like, you know, some days it's like we look at each other and it's like, who's going to make dinner? Like, I don't even want to walk another step. Who, like, you know, who's going to do the laundry? And like, you show up for each other in this beautiful dance and act of service. And that to me is love. Like it's, it is the blood, sweat and tears and it is the hard stuff. And it is, you know, trans, you know, transgressing is what I wanted to say. Traipsing, that's the word. Traipsing through the Maya together. Like it is a bond built in the freaking fires of Mordor in a lot of ways. And so um, I might read some of that stuff into your reading and I hope that it's not something that scares you away or or puts a negative thought into your head because I, I know this for a fact with astrology and that's why I've tiptoed into the world of astrology. Um, it, it's, it's taken karmically very serious to read someone's astrological chart in Vedic astrology because if you read something into someone's astrological chart, like you read an energy there um, and you give an example of like how that could express itself and you plant a seed that then grows into something that maybe that's not how it wanted to express itself or something like that, you know, where um, or you cause like a phobia, that karma can come, can come back onto you. So it's something to be entered into consciously as is tarot. And I have I haven't really spoken a lot about, um, you know, the, 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 the relationship with tarot, but I guess it's just been on my head and my heart and I want to say it. Um, I know a lot of you aren't going to listen to this, but I, I want to just say it before we get started because I, a lot of readers do a really good job of just t talking about like tarot basics. And so I just have kind of not felt like I needed to really do that. But, um, on both sides of the equation, a lot of us read and consume tarot, right? Like in this community and, on both sides of the equation, we have responsibility, responsibilities to, to do so in a way that is conscious. You know, I've started to put a spiritual disclaimer into my, um, into my little drop down because I feel that it's important to understand that this can help you build your spirituality. Tarot, you know, was originally used to meditate on the major arcana as different points in the spiritual journey. And that's the beautiful thing about tarot is that, um, we might have a simple mundane question like who is my future spouse or how can I get through this situation and tarot can help answer that insofar as it feels it wants to and um, you know it's it's always going to get to this deeper level this soul level this this communing with the spiritual realm and the the deep dark divine feminine and the chaos principle is kind of what um, how I view it that's why I wanted to call my channel the chaos witch um, but there's a phrase, you know, the, the psychotic drowns in the same waters that the mystic swims in. It, it very much depends on how you yourself approach tarot. And, and if you bring your personal responsibility with you, or if you're just trying to offload, you know, the responsibility of making personal, your personal choice onto a reader, which isn't fair. And it's, it's also not a proper use of this amazing experience that we get to engage in, right? Because I believe that life is mostly we want to get to the end result like who's my spouse who's who is that that end result person but you realize you get there and it's just more process life is just it's it's about the process more than the end result so I've said a lot of things to you and they were all probably very preacher preachy so um but I just felt like this one in particular it's important to go in with um just clarifying clarifying these things um I don't know if I mentioned this, but Lisa from Arcane and Stellar had posted something on her, her wall um, where she was kind of getting at this, and I haven't stopped thinking about it ever since. So that's where that came from. But anyways, um, so I do have three piles here. Pile number one, pile number two, pile number three, and I'm going to go ahead and insert a photo of these in case you want to get a better look, and um, otherwise I'll meet you guys at your pile.
Pile number one. This is cute. This is cute. So, um, first of all, you guys might meet this person like around May um, with the, the Hawthorne and the Sacred. You guys could meet this person at like some social kind of gathering, some kind of party. I really am getting the energy of learning here. Some of you guys are going to meet this person when you're in some kind of like educational program, college, school. Some of you guys are going to be like in law school, but there's a heavy student vibe. You literally have the student card. Um, coming up over here. I feel like you guys have the energy of like a lifelong learner. You're somebody who's very fair. You're really good with your communication and you have like some kind of a clear mind. That Those traits you're going to see in your person when you first kind of meet them, right? This is definitely like sparking up a conversation. And I feel like you might meet this person when you're in a relationship already or when you've just ended a relationship or when you're deliberating about leaving a relationship that you don't necessarily feel is working for you. Some of you guys are going to have um, met this, like maybe you guys are already married even for some of you guys. Um, and there's definitely a strong um, emotional connection and I feel like your feelings don't come out right away. And it might even like challenge the way that you guys are talking with each other because you might find this person to be quite curt, um, very like straight to the point here. But there is a lot of watery energy here. So there's a lot of like emotions. You have the water card, they have the Pisces card, the moon card is at the bottom of the deck and you have the hangman which is Pisces energy coming through here. So you guys are both, I feel like in touch with some form of like spirituality, but you're both hiding your feelings for each other. Definitely with the high priestess card coming out where it's like, I feel like there's a long emotional lead up to this relationship. Not like, you know, crazy long, but I do feel that you're both, um, confused about your emotional feelings towards one another because you're both leading with this very brainy, very airy, very communicative knowledge. You guys might have one or both of you could have, um, like a rising sign in an air sign, which is Gemini, um, Aquarius and Libra. You literally, you could have some Libra on your chart because you have justice coming out over here. Um, this person has Pisces coming out on their side. Um, and then we also have Pisces as the bottom of the deck. So you guys could have some planets in Pisces, like your, um, your connection could be through Pisces. So if you have Pisces in your chart, just know that somebody's personal, their personal planet could be aspecting that part of your nature, right? So like if it, if it is your moon, your internal self, I do feel like this is a very emotionally fulfilling connection. The moon is said to be the most important planet when it comes to synastry, because this is your internal self. And especially, um, you know, for men, it's uh, it's debated whether or not their partner is more depicted by Venus or the moon. Um, so I feel like this is just a really strong, like emotional kind of connection. And I feel like maybe part of both of you guys feeling safe is like some form of direct communication or equal, equal communication that is also loving. And that's going to show up here in your, um, in your relationship. There's something also about spirituality. Hawthorne is a very spiritual plant. It's associated with May Day, like uh, the first of May, the, the celebration there. So maybe your person has like, you both have these like kind of hidden beliefs that maybe you don't feel like you want to come right out with, but um, you're both very like respectful of nature and you know, um, you're both very spiritual people. I feel like you're both very spiritual people. This is like also the kind of group that you could be meeting this person in is a spiritual group. Somebody could be um, a leader in this group with the high priestess card showing up here. Uh, it could be you with the, the justice card. So with the hangman energy as well, like you guys could meet this person in a foreign place. I feel like this person, um, maybe they even seem what isolated. Maybe this is their speech and how they speak. Um, keeps them a little bit more isolated, but under the surface, this person has like a soft side to them. And I feel like you sense that right off the bat because you guys are having some kind of moon emotional connection between the two of you. Um, again, with this Pisces, you guys could meet in an isolated place. You guys could meet being of service and um, partaking in some kind of wisdom activity or some kind of spiritual activity, some kind of ritual. So if you guys, especially those of you who like you follow the lunar calendar, you are in touch with astrology and you're going to events, you know, like possibly May Day is also Beltane for those of you who are like kind of witchy. You're going to like a Beltane or a May Day like celebration. You could meet this person there. Um, and I, I don't know, maybe one or both of you have like a speaking role or something, but there's just this acknowledgement of the two of you. Um, cause for some of you guys, there's the energy of air, right? You're showing up as justice Libra, like an air sign. Um, 
and they're showing up as the ace of swords. So it's like you guys, there's communication in your meeting for sure. And you guys might start off as friends. You might have like very cut and dry responsibilities as speakers or something, but there's like subtext to whatever it is you're saying. So either you guys do talk to each other or it's like you're, you guys are talking, like giving speeches at like a group or something, but you're acknowledging each other in that way. Um, your person has a dual nature to them. So I'm not sure. Here's the thing. There's high vibe, every single sign. We can read any sign we want to, to filth, right? People will know about like astrology. It's not like there's a sign that's like a godsend and a sign that's the dirty little rascal. Although people oftentimes talk about Pisces in general as being like the best sign or Scorpio or Gemini usually gets like super shat upon for being like manipulative or duplicit or having under underhanded like each sign you guys has a high vibration and a low vibration and we eat we have to master all 12 energies each one of us has all 12 energies represented somewhere in our chart and if you find yourself hating on a sign you probably need to go to work with that with that energy because you have to embrace that high vibrational um energy of that sign and the reason i'm saying that to you is pisces is one of the dual signs and pisces actually is um they can they're very Pisces, especially towards the end with that Mercury energy and Rebati, um, they can be very duplicit. If they want, that's low vibrational Pisces. High vibrational Pisces is going to use that dual nature with the two fishes here um, in order to practice non-attachment, in order to like be quite spiritual. So you have this, you also have the energy of the trickster here. So I'm getting the energy of Revati to your person. So that could either show up as someone who is quite mischievous and duplicit, but this can also be like, the most spiritual of energies. Um, Rivadi energy, this Rivadi energy that I'm getting here, just so you know, this is the shadow attribute that I pulled. So I don't know if that means something to you. They can be, just know that this person is a lot smarter than they let on. This person could have, um, like you could want to save this person. Do you, somebody had rescuer. Oh, this person did. Okay, well, there could be, okay, so depending on, especially like Pisces males um, or people who are Pisces that have a lot of masculine energy, they want to rescue. Like a lot of times it can, it can be that they like to, Pisces likes to um, give them, give of themselves in relationships. So, um, and that feminine energy can oftentimes like to be rescued. So it's going to, depending on if you're dealing with a primarily masculine or feminine energy, it could show up either way. Um, this person, I feel like, there's something about their speech, you guys, especially like with this Rayvati energy being a, the Mercury ruled nakshatra within Pisces. Um, you might find that this person is quite witty. They're very smart. They're really good with their speech. Um, this could be a healer. Someone who has a lot of education in a healing field like psychology here with the moon or also healing here with Pisces. This person could be working abroad or studying to work abroad. Um, and then we have the plane in the background. So this person could travel a lot. They could be from some place where there's like a lot of ocean. This person could be very drawn to the ocean. You guys could meet around water, actually. Um, like whatever. I'm really getting that you guys are kind of witchy and like you, you're social and you like to go to these like events or something. That's where you're going to meet your person, which is amazing, right? My mom was like, you got to have some hobbies so you don't meet your man in a bar. And <laughs> My, she met my dad at a bar. So, you know, there was hurt there. <laughs> anyway, um, like you're going to meet your person having some kind of like hobby and like definitely water energy coming through. So some of you guys, this is like an event that takes place near water or involves water. Um, a lot of sacred rites and stuff involve water. So, um, just know that this person though, um, they could be very, so this is what I'm saying. This is what I was trying to say for the last like thousand minutes is that this person, this energy could manifest in a very high vibrational way or a very low vibrational way, depending on their free will, the choices that they've made and how they've decided to um, approach their own self. Given that this, and, and, and actually, I'm not going to say that because I've lived in a spiritual community and a lot of my friends talk about, you got to be careful about like, especially um, like these men who kind of put forward this spiritual identity, but they use it to be gross. So, you know, keep your eyes open about this person. Um, because for some of you, this is going to be a very spiritually evolved person. This is going to be a leader in the spiritual community. This is going to be someone who, um, probably for a living rescues people in one way or another. Um, as in like, maybe this person is a medic or this person is, um, I'm trying to talk slower because I'm a Gemini and I talk really fast and somebody asked me to talk slower and I've gotten that feedback my entire life. Um, and I'm realizing you guys have like a lot of chatty energy about you because you guys have a meeting of the minds, but it's deeper than that. It's also like your emotional minds. It's very much like the moon in Vedic, which, which is like 
more holistic than in Western. Like it consists, the mind isn't separate from the emotions in Vedic and, and it's not in real life either. But, um, so you guys, you guys vibe in this way. You have a lot of shared values. Um, I feel like there's divine feminine energy, some kind of celebration of the female. Um, and this could be like a lunar event. So some of you guys are from religions, um, you know, like Islam or Judaism that follow a lunar calendar. And you guys have these like spiritual, I'm getting like, this is a group that's highly spiritual and meets their person there. If it's not spiritual, it's, um, I mean, all of life is spiritual when you get right down to it, but don't mind me. Um, I'm just like out with the nuggets today. So, um, anyways. This could be like a school setting. This could be you taking a workshop of some kind, learning a new skill. You could be teaching, you know, you could be teaching. So um, I feel like this person is going to be the first person to kind of talk to you. And it might be abrasive. It might be abrasive at first, but you are seeing this person. Like you're definitely taking note of this person on an energetic level. You're hiding your feelings though. And you're also in charge. Um, if this is a feminine energy over here, there's a lot of like psychology that says that the female actually like initiates you know, that initiates the, this dance that goes on and you are doing that. You're, um, you're emotional, you're on your guard. You are really maybe judging this person like in, in a healthy way, you know, they're judging their fitness to be your partner. You're trying to see behind the surface. You could be, can, you might have some psychic abilities and you're, you're getting downloads about this person. Some of you guys, like when I met my husband and this is not even a friggin' lie, I woke up that morning and I was like, I think I'm going to meet my husband today. And the person that I met that picked me up from the train station where I was going was my husband. But I was like on my guard about it. And it was just kind of like kind of free flowing in the back of my mind. Anyways, you could have that. You could have some weird, like, intuitive hit of, like, um, you know, like, he wasn't even in front of me at the time. Do you know what I'm saying? I was like, I think I'm going to meet my husband today. <laughs> and I was like, Jessica, stop being weird. Because um, it was, you know, I hadn't really embraced my spirituality yet. But you guys have. You guys have fully embraced yourselves as a spiritual being when you meet this person. Um, this person could have a history of being a bit of, like, a uh, having a lot of relationships in the past. And it's something that I feel like you are aware of and that you, um, you're, you're aware of, you know, cause this person, you guys, I'm the energies that I'm seeing here. I'm not going to lie to you. They have a lot of, um, open energy regarding their sexuality and their love. So, um, but it's like very honest. Okay. With the rescuer energy, this light attribute provides strength and support to others in crisis, acts out of love with no expectation or of reward. I do feel like this person is like a very giving person, a very loving person. Venus exalts and Pisces. Um, this is a very loving person, not just in a re like romantic relationship to everyone. I feel like this is like a person that people lean on for support. Your person is a person that gives very good advice, like very good spiritual advice. Um, and they have the, here's, here's how I wanted to say this. They have the potential to manipulate people. Now healers oftentimes manipulate people. I've mentioned NLP, neuro linguistic programming. Your person might have that skill they, they might be trained in that. Um, that is a manip psychological manipulation tools. A lot of healers are trained in this and trusted to use it so that they can plant in healing suggestions in the mind. Your person might like actually be trained in hypnosis or some kind of neuro-linguistic programming or something like that. Either way, this person has a natural understanding of people, of psychological processes, and they do have a very loving way about them. Very loving. Um, but also smart and witty. This person, this person's great. Um, has the potential to be great. Like, and I, like I said, it's going to depend on how high vibrational their energy is. But, um, I feel like this person's a good negotiator and, um, but they also, it could go either. I'm really, I'm going to read that this is, this person's high vibrational cause I'm kind of getting that in this energy, but, um, we got to keep an eye on them. But, um, just, I also feel like they're very attractive and very sexy. There's something about the way they dress. Maybe they dress kind of like casual. There's something casual about their dress, depending on whatever gender it is. So if it's female, maybe they wear more like of a boho style, you know, loose flowy dresses, hoop earrings, um, you know, makes you feel comfortable to be around. Same thing with a masculine. I don't know, maybe like sweaters, um, like, like, um, <sighs> oh, oh my gosh, that comedian when he was on, um, 
when he was on Parks and Rec, Donna, Donna's boyfriend that she hates, but he's like the most loving of people. He knows how to do everything. He's always helpful. It's that energy, you know? And she's like, oh no, he is the worst. And like you spend the entire episode trying to figure out why he's the worst because he seems like the best. And honestly, you just realize that she's running away from stuff, but it has that energy of like, are you the worst or are you the best? You know, and that's going to be the crux of your issue is you're trying to see what this person's true nature is. So this, um, I don't know if you have trust issues. I think you do. And that's something that's being brought up in this relationship, because I feel like in the past you've had secretive relationships where people you've had to cut people off. You've had to rise up into your own strength, you know, um, a lot of sexual attraction in this pile. Um, there's a lot of trying to see each other fully and like see each other's secrets in this pile. This is a very spiritually evolved pile. Pile number one is, um, I feel like you always learn things from this person and they always learn things from you because, um, what they like about you is that you are, um, first of all, beautiful. You probably are water dominant in some way. So cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy, um, or your moon, you have moon in the first house. Um, you know, something, something like that, that's bringing this water energy to the front. You're very loving. You're very connected. You're a person who builds connection within community. You have very deep relationships. I think this person in some way knows that you have some kind of psychic gift or you consider yourself very empathetic and, um, but you're also in charge. You're definitely in charge here. Um, like you have a dominant energy. It's just loving. And I feel like this is something your person likes because, um, I feel like they're a little bit the same way, but I think you're definitely the more dominant one and something they very much appreciate. Um, and they love to, Maybe you're a little hard to please, but it's like your person loves to please you because the things that please you are like being spiritual, you know, um, also being creative and being artistic. Your person has like a lot of respect for some kind of creative skill that's coming through over here. Um, so with the student as your light attribute that your person's connecting to humility and devotion to knowledge, openness to lifelong learning, like that's something that your person just loves about you, that you're always learning. You both are very smart people. Like, and you're always learning and you I feel like you're always seeking out experiences where you're connecting and you're learning through that way. And then the shadow attribute, mother, smothering or abandoning children, instilling guilt in children for becoming independent. You're a nurturer. Like basically, yeah, I guess this is bad. Well, no, it is bad, but, um, it's not bad. Anyways, Mercury retrograde, just ignore me. Um, but like you you definitely are in some kind of leadership position where you're taking care of people. You might help be helping people find some kind of retribution. So you could be a lawyer or you could be some kind of healer with the water energy. You could be a healer lawyer going around healing people, right? That's what I'm saying. Spirituality is super mundane. Um, but the way that you interact, like people maybe have a habit of getting dependent upon you. You guys might have Uttara Bajrapada energy in your chart. That's a Saturn ruled nakshatra in Pisces. And that is the cow. And it's like people always need more from the cow, you know, and the cow just like wants to keep giving and giving and giving and giving. So, um, this person, I feel like wants to be your backstop a little bit. It's something that they can relate to. You both can, can relate to that. Um, I feel like your person's very reflective. They're a very reflective person. They're always not, they're not an open book for sure. This person's very mysterious in a lot of ways. I think it's something you're very attracted to, but it like, it, it's almost like exercising your own psychic ability. And it's like, you guys are building that upon one another because there seems to be this infinite secret between the two of you that, um, it's like, that's an, another piece of this. It's like pulling you deeper into your own spirituality. It's something you both appreciate about uh, what you both bring to the table here. Um, there might be some kind of, because I'm getting the energy of like some kind of like foreign, like your person might not be the same race as you. They might be from a different place than you. Uh, and like I said, you know, uh, you go to like, you know, a place, you go to like a festival or something that you guys have in common. So it could be a struggle to like, get in the same place and you might feel like your person's very withdrawn. It's something that they're going to think a lot about because they're just, they feel so connected and so drawn to you. And I do think this person is going to eventually make, make, make the big gesture. Remember chasing Liberty with Mandy Moore? The, I feel like your person's going to make the big gesture of like offering either for you to move in with them or them to move in with you. Um, you are very logical. You're thinking about, you're both kind of are, you're both thinking about like how to make this work. So I do feel like there's some kind of strategizing about how to make this work. I don't know if it's cause like, there, like, there could be a cultural difference, um, or, uh, like, 
in areas, in religions, in um, something like that, where you guys have to like really navigate this, you know? Um, even if it's just talking to one another about, like maybe you guys come from different religions and so you have to have this conversation about like whenever you're introducing each other to your families or something like, okay, well, is it going to be okay? Like I have to pray five times a day. Like, is that going to be okay? Like, you know, what things do I need to know? You might have to strategize around things like that, especially at first, you know? Um, cause it might be a bit of a wild card. Like something between you guys is a bit of a wild card, just negotiating your daily lives. But, um, I do feel like your person, okay, so I'm trying to meet a lot of expectations right now. There is like the sense of being quite busy. I think you guys are both people with a lot of talents and skills and things like that. Um, we also have, do you think you could ever forgive me? And I kind of get that this is your person, like their past and their history, because I think this person maybe has been with a lot of people. The moon had 28 wives. Maybe your person's been married before, um, or something like that. And so it's like, there's something that your person wants your forgiveness about in some way. Um, or it could just be, cause I feel like your person is quite withdrawn, but I don't think that it's because of anything to do with this relationship. There's like distance, there's like physical distance between the two of you. And it's like, there's a point where it's big, like whatever it is, it's like, um, it's totally navig, you know, you can navigate it, but it's like, you guys just literally are not from the same place or something. So you both, I feel like your person withdraws in themselves to think about this and maybe, um, and you're like really looking at this person and decide like you're in judgment of this person, like in a way that's healthy for you. So with this, I want to shake up everything for you, but that's crazy. That's what I'm saying. There's something here that like a, a giant move or, um, traditions being from different races, something like that, where it's like, there might be something that you feel that you need to na like negotiate and navigate like through your daily lives, but you want to shake up everything for each other because you, there, this is true love here. This is, there's a lot of love. There's a lot of love here. And in a way, I feel like you feel like this is like, the only person who can really match you on a certain level, you know? Um, uh, 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 so there could be something about your person's eyes over here. Um, a lot of times Pisces, like if they come from like a background, they have like uh, blue eyes or like green eyes. There's something about their eyes. Either way, even this person has brown eyes, um, very shiny eyes. Pisces, ugh, you guys, Pisces are just pretty people. They just really are. They have these like very well formed mouths with like nice teeth. So this is like how your person could look. Um, you know, very elegant. There's something very elegant about them. They're um, like if a lot of times Pisces men have like really big feet. Pisces women have really small feet, but there's something like about their feet that might be nice. Um, like pleasing to you to look at. Um, there's something about this person's eyes, their mouth, their teeth. I feel like this person smiles a lot. Um, they're like, there's something like ethereal, you know, otherworldly. It's almost like you're looking through your person. Um, and I feel like you have a similar quality over here with the water. Um, uh, da, 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 no. I'm intentionally holding back. Yeah, I feel like your person does like your person hold, hold back, but there's a lot of energetic exchange. There's something about traditions coming through. And I do, I feel like this, I feel like you meet at like some kind of sacred rite or like at a festival where you're, this is something you guys have in common and it's a really big deal and it's important to both of you. Um, I want to spoil you rotten. Yeah. And then look at this, like with the Knight of pentacles, he's giving her this little pear, you know? And I mean, it's not a little pear. It's just a regular size pear, but what is it? I, I don't know. He's giving her something. Um, and look how pretty she looks like in her little outfit here. Um, there's something about like this person wants to be your knight in shining arm armor in some way. Cause I feel like you have been not treated right in relationships. This person knows that and you hide it. Um, and you be, you're protective of yourself. You don't come off like, um, I feel like you really don't, you don't come off like, uh, as sensitive as you actually are on the inside, you come off like, I will cut you. I will cut you out of my life because you've learned that and you have been your own protector in the past. So this person wants to spoil you rotten. They want to help you live the good life. They want to take care of you. This person has this amazing quality and ability to take care of people. Also, I just looked up here. I go to your social media all the time. So, um, yeah, like there's this distance here or something, you know, it's like, they always want to know what you're doing. There's like a strong pull between the two of you guys. Um, yeah, yes. um, over here, uh, you, this is like, um, 
very comforting, strong energy that you're bringing to the table. And you are a comforter, you are a caretaker, you are a carrier of the mantle of water in this world. Um, some of you are black. The black race is the water race carrying the water mantle of spirituality and connectivity into this world. Um, and so some of you are very, like, you could be politically active here with the justice card as well. So this is another thing where this, this could be some kind of an event um, for that as well. Um, you know what's funny? Is I feel like the two of you start out, like, snippy with each other. This could be like your love language. I don't know. Because with the moon, I'm noticing the one and the four. So the one can be like that Mars energy of like, like you, you're both strong people. I feel like you're both strong, but like sensitive on the inside. And you're both, but you're both like independent as well with the four coming through like that emperor energy, that stable tradition energy. With traditions, I do feel like this person, there's something quite traditional about this person, you know, um, where they want like, and that's what they see in you. Like this is mother energy. This is like, this, you, I'm getting this as you, but like this person would make a very good mother because they're very emotionally balanced, they're very smart, they're very um, uh, fair, and they're always learning. This person's very good with their words. You could, this is spiritual teacher energy as well with the water and the mother card coming through. And then obviously with this mother card, it's like very, very nurturing, but I do feel like it can deplete you. This is what I'm saying, and like this person sees it and they want to kind of like step up and be, be like that person for you. Because this person is very aware of your emotional state. And this is good in Vedic astrology. Um, there's rules about the, like, Vedic astrology has, like, certain rules, especially in Senestry. And, like, the man's moon has to be behind the woman's moon so that he can run up and see how she's feeling. That way the woman isn't constantly explaining her emotional state. And it's supposed to be no more than six signs behind it. So I'm getting that you guys have a very strong moon connection in that way. Only table resonates, you know. I'm... There's ways that you can kind of get around that, but it's it's considered like super important in that way. So I have talked for a thousand ages. I hope that that was helpful for you guys. And again, only take what resonates. Um, and and this person, you guys, just so you know, they, they, they might have some skeletons in their closet. They might have... They might have not treated people very well in the past, especially they might not have treated women very well in the past because this person sees so deeply into humanity that they could use that nefariously if that's the vibration that they're in but you're probably going to be able to pick up on it so um flip these energies they're very similar actually so but um you know flip these energies if you want but that's what i have for you guys pile number one if that resonated please like comment and subscribe
Okay. Okay, pile number two. This is, I've seen this energy before. Um, some of you, okay, what I'm kind of getting now, both of you, there's, you guys come together through some kind of painful experience. I feel like both of you guys have been divorced or like you're, you're getting divorced, they're getting divorced, something like that. Um, and if it's not a, like a divorce, which I'm really getting, but like if it isn't a divorce, it is some kind of like, you're both coming out of some kind of long-term relationship or some kind of heartbreak because the energy that binds you together here at first is the three of swords. Um, you know, which is the energy of betrayal. I'm not going to show these to the camera because I don't want to get in trouble, but, um, you know, he, we have the five of pentacles, the three of swords and the six of pentacles is what's kind of joining you guys together. So, um, I feel like your person feels kind of like left out in the cold. This is some kind of like stepping out of tradition that you guys meet. Some of you guys, this person's a lawyer and, or they work in the court system. And while you're getting a divorce, you're going to meet this person. Um, and I've seen that before. I think it was in a personal reading. A shout out to you if that was the energy. I, I'm, or it may, I can't remember, but I've seen this before. Anyways, also with the fern, um, that it grows out of difficult circumstances. Like it always can. It grows wherever. Ferns, like they, they pollinate like through the air and through insects and they grow wherever. Like they just, they're so hardy. And so like maybe like you guys have grown um, some kind of something in the past. For you, it might have a lot to do with career. And you might be struggling with your career, with your finances um, at some point here. Uh, and with this person, I feel like they could have gotten a divorce or they're stepping outside of tradition in some way. And I actually, some of you guys who watch me shuffle, I, I put these three to the side because I didn't, I usually put whatever pile, like I like to put the cards away and I, I added these and they came out again and they came out in the first pile. With traditions, I'm getting law, like I'm getting some kind of law traditions with the Lib Libra card here. Um, and also with the five of pentacles, like stepping outside of traditions or like breaking traditions. So I'm getting like divorce, divorce court for some of you guys. Um, and this person's like showing up as a very dominating figure with the Leo. So, so I'm saying is like, um, I'm also getting that they're very eloquent. They're, they're very large and in charge. I just, I feel like this person has a very strong personality, your person, very strong personality. There's a lot of sexual attraction between the two of you guys, like a lot of sexual attraction. Um, you're both very, but there, it's like on multiple levels. You guys are both, um, you're very polished in your presentation, in your external presentation. That's something that you both are very drawn to in one another. There's something about like, you guys have had difficult times in love and it's something that you really bond on and um, that you're able to kind of grow from. Um, there's a lot of healing that's happening in this pile. And this is like a change of fortune, like a quick change of fortune for you guys. Some of you guys have Sagittarius in your chart, Mula, like the energy of Mula, Nakshatra coming through where your luck was down and then you're going to meet this person. Your luck's going to change. Um, and they're going to bring in a lot of just good energy. This person really wants to be there for you in some kind of way. Um, they just don't really know how to at the beginning and it could be because of their position here. Um, so we, their light attribute is seeing the potential for sacred beauty in all things, the belief that everything is possible and showing up as the sun as Leo. This is like a very sunny person. They're good with their communication. This person like dominates the space that they're in. They have a lot of positive energy. I saw, um, when I was shuffling this, I saw, um, I want to have an adventure with you. I feel like this person might want to have an adventure with you, but it's like they bring in the sun on a rainy day at some point in your life where you're really going through it. You know, I feel like this time in your life, like you're kind of going through it when it comes to like money or career or, um, the six of pentacles that can be career, but it's like giving in two places and feeling uh, with the three of swords here. I feel like you feel betrayed. You know, you might be having some kind of money settlement or something here and you're showing up as Venus. You're showing up as someone beautiful. This is what I'm saying. This is very attractive energy between the two of you guys and having Libra at the bottom of the deck, hugely attractive energy. I also have legs down here. So this person might like your legs. You both appreciate that you're intelligent. You're both like broadly intelligent. And you like the way that each person like kind of speaks, you know, um, there could be something about this that maybe starts off as secretive because you're not necessarily ready to announce that you have, you're in a relationship. You don't know what people are going to think. You know, you're both very kind of diplomatic about things. So maybe, maybe there is some sneaking off here, but, um, I don't get, I mean, for some of you guys, maybe somebody's not entirely divorced yet. Your person could be in a relationship. We also, like, one of the cards that I put away is, do you think you could ever forgive me? And I want to spoil you rotten. I think your person has some kind of status or um, I'm really getting law. I think they work in law. 
Um, so they have some kind of status in that way. This is a person who's used to being out in front of people in some way. Um, they're used to like communicating. They're used to being very eloquent and very jovial. They put forward like a really good, um, really good front here. So they have two fives. Like I feel like they're used to dealing in strife. Now this could be like through their job. So they're but they're used to dealing in with strife and struggle. This person's a great argue arg arguer. Um, and you're like a lover. You know, and but you're eloquent too, and like Libra rules Venus, so I I feel like you're good with you both are good with deliberation, but this person is very like dominating in some way. Um, but I feel like you like that in in one way or another. But um, yeah, okay. So this person could be in a relationship or something when you meet them, or you could be. I'm kind of getting that it's this person. Um, cause with the child nature coming out as a shadow attribute, tendency to abuse animals, people, and the environment. I, I feel, I don't think that this person is like an intentional abuser. I think they're very self-centered and they're very dominant. They're very focused on their career. This is a workaholic. Um, and they, they could just be like very focused on themselves, you know, and their own success. And it's something that like, that's how they, they build relationships is through like showing off almost, you know, where it's like, see, I've made myself into this really big, amazing partner. And look, I can, at all these things I can provide you because we also had, I want to spoil you rotten. This person does want to spoil you rotten. This person has a lot to give you in terms of money, in terms of status and protection and those kinds of things. And that's how they show their love. Um, I feel like you are different than maybe you both are different. There could be a status different here, difference here. You guys both could be different than people that usually they date because, but it's a good different. Um, I do feel like you have to watch this person, especially at first, like this is going to be your spouse, right? But, um, like I was saying, I, I'm seeing like that this person, like that self-centered nature, there's like, you have the, you have the, there is the energy of betrayal kind of coming out here. Um, but I don't know if that's like the, the energy that they're coming from and they, they're trying to turn over a new leaf and they want you to forgive them and they're sorry that they ran away because this person might, might run away. And yeah, they're afraid of losing you. They feel rejected. I feel like this is like, I'm sorry for the way I treated you. So I think this person is turning over a new leaf in their behavior because of the way that you are. And in a way, it's like your soft nature. You're a very conscious person. You're very conscious and you will leave if you need to leave. And I feel like you will break your own heart if that's what you need to do. There's something about that very soft, sweet, feminine kind of nature to you. Feminine nature, right? So um, like that, that caring connectedness. You're really showing up for this person in the relationship, you know, you're very sweet. I feel like you make a lot of loving gestures towards this person and it starts to change them, you know? Um, and they start to realize how they are in, in, in their own, their own behavior. We have the growth card here. You inspire this person to grow. I feel like this person grows you in a, this is the masculine side. This is the feminine side, not genders, energies. So, um, take what resonates and flip if you need, but the masculine husband in a woman's chart is Jupiter, the expander. And I do feel like this person expands you because they expand like your, um, like, like I said, this person expands your status. They expand your protection, your reach, and you feel safe and protected. And then you're loving this person and you're expanding them in their knowledge and you're helping them to grow and integrate into like a relationship and look at their own behavior and things like that. So in that way, this is like a really great relationship for that. Um, there, this is like a turning point for both of you, very healing turning point for both of you being, being together in relationship with one another. There could be something about this person's hair that really catches your attention. Something very glowy about their skin. They could have a very wide jaw. Um, this person can be a little cold and a little get to know, like hard to get to know. They might've like made fun of feminine nature, feminine traits in the past, like, you know, making those kinds of jokes of like, oh, she's going to take forever to get ready and do, 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 you know, um, that kind of thing, but it's like, there's something that you're independent, you're strong, independent, you could be financially independent, even if you do like, you're, you're undergoing some kind of struggle here. It doesn't have to be marriage, but I'm seeing some kind of struggle with your job or your time, something like that. Um, oh yeah, I just, you're in court. I feel like maybe you're in court or you're working with like a mediator or something. Um, 
this person helps to like really uplift you though. I feel like you're going through a hard time and this person like helps to uplift you. So this person might want to like travel. They love to make you smile. This person loves to make you smile. They want to give you stuff. They want to like give you gifts because they like to watch your face light up. You're a simple person too. Like I feel like you like nice things. You appreciate like luxury but luxury in the simple way of like you like really nice fabrics and like you know this person could get like a nice necklace or something and you appreciate it genuinely and this person likes to watch your face they find you very attractive i can't even i can't even i would do it i, I couldn't do it justice like how much this person finds you attractive i'm trying to talk slower and i just realized that i was doing my gemini thing talking really fast so um they see you as very sexual. There's a lot of sexual attraction here. We have legs. So I think like this person's very attracted to your legs. Um, and also her legs are front and center and also her boobies and her boobies here too. Um, I just feel like this situation is born out of some kind of heartbreak. I do think there's a third variable here. It might not be a relationship. Um, for some of you it will be, but um, I think it's like you're leaving a bad relationship, the both of you. And um, if not, it's like somebody dicked you around in a contract or something. And... I didn't mean to say dick. Um, and I've just said it again. Great. <laughs> Mercury retrograde. Um, anyways, but like this person helps you out of this. This person has some kind of knowledge. They shine the light on some kind of clarity. They're healing the situation. Um, but I feel like at first it's kind of not that deep. Um, like you offer the depth. This person like not that deep in relationships. At first you change that in them. So um, it, there is... Um, there's healing here. I feel like this person kind of heals your heart. They have the potential to, and like I was explaining in pile number one, you have to understand that there's high vibrational energy and low vibrational energy to any sign or any energy that could come through. High, I'm going to read this as if it's high vibrational. This person is, is they love to give you stuff. I can't, I can't even stress that enough. They just love to. Um, and they, they, they see something reverent in you that they want to bow to. This is a proper, by the way, um, her nipples out, but it's fine. Um, this is the yin yang, the masculine bowing to the feminine, the death principle bowing to the light principle in indigenous cultures. The men used to go through, um, not all of them, but I read about this one time uh, in this Native American tribe. The men would go through and be like, hey, we need this many huts. That means we got to cut down this many trees. And they had to petition the council of grandmothers, the feminine nature, the life-giving nature, and say, okay, well, we need this many trees. And then they would probably say it was okay but if it was too much death the life principle had to check the death principle that's the way it is with the masculine and the feminine and like this masculine wants to give to your feminine and they want to defer to your life because you make things grow first of all you might like plants and stuff you just make things grow i feel like you're good with money um and like yeah you're you're an energy that makes things grow people places things nouns <laughs> sorry um you're a grower of nouns, pile number two. <laughs> so um, with the guide coming out as your light attribute, it represents the nature of the divine in life and in yourself. This person literally sees that in you. This person, like you are the divine feminine. This is the energy of the divine feminine. And they want to give you, like they see such potential in you um, that maybe has been like latent because of the heartbreak that you've been through. You've like received some kind of setback because of, whatever you've been through in your life. And this person's like, not on my watch. Like I want to give to this person because they actually appreciate it. Um, with the shadow attribute, inability to commit to a path once found. I feel like you, you just have the spirit of like a wanderer of a spiritual seeker. I feel like you're a person who likes to learn about other cultures and different religions and things like that because Venus is broadly intelligent. Like not that you can't have some kind of specialty or here. You're definitely into spirituality. I feel like you're a spirit. This is, oh, whoa. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. You're a spiritual teacher. Um, Venus is the teacher to demons, but demons are just people who have gone on a material path. That's exactly who you are to this person because this person's been consumed in materialism at some point in their life, your person. And um, you help to guide those people back because Venus likes to live the good life. We all do. The moon likes to live the good life too. And that's like the most important planet. So with that being said, it's like you help this person find a balance, find a balance here, find a balance. Um, you could have Libra on your chart um, or strong Venus. You could have strong Venus like on the midheaven or in, anyways. Um, you, uh, you help bring this person back to the light where they find, start to experience some kind of deeper meaning um, 
through their interactions with you. I think literally through sex as well. Like you're giving some kind of energetic exchange. Could be in a tantra. You know a lot of spiritual stuff. And you are very eloquent in the way that you uh, talk about it. So it's very healing. And this person's like, I could have that in my house every day. Um, notice the way that I said that was a little bit objectified. And I do think that there's something about you this person objectifies a bit. Um, this person loves to like get you spa treatments and things like that, like buy you new clothes, but because this person does there, there's always going to be a bit of this person that's going to be materialistic and in a, in a way that they understand that that helps to take care of you and them and your life. And so it is a way that they show love. And this person needs a lot of like, uh, praise and you're good at giving it because you, you are so deeply appreciative something that really binds you guys together. You're not unaware of like how this person's uh, helping your life, but it's more than just like, thanks for the watch, honey. Like, it's not like that. And they might've been with partners like that in the past, but that were like, and I'll have a Louis Vuitton this and something like you're like genuinely appreciative. You don't expect things. And you have this very deep layer to yourself that they didn't even know that they could see life in that way. And you bring that, um, so you're very imaginative and you're very um, loving, very sexual. You bring that to the connection. This person sexual as well. This person likes to compete though and you are a prize. I feel like pile number two, I kind of get that you guys are real, real hot and like they see you as a prize. They like to compete for your attention and they like to be a balm to your wounds. There's three fives here, you guys. So this is, this is something born out of like human hardship, human heartbreak. Um, this person, I feel like I just heard barn happy horse. Um, I feel like this person's a barn happy horse. They could have some saggy in their chart. They definitely have fire. This person's an adventurer. They're a wanderer. They don't like to be tied down, but it's like you are, um, they know that in your barn, there's sugar cubes. <laughs> oh God. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that, but it's like you, you, there's something about you that's, um, you're very aware. Okay. And you know how to wrangle this person subtly, subtly. It's not even bad. You're just, you're just smart and you understand energy and you understand that you're never going to dominate this person ever. You're never going to domineer this person. You understand that. And instead you like, you make what they want. Like you, you provide that. You're just so ever flowing and abundant that this person, like, I feel like at first it's like they always come back to you because you always have what they want. And that's like, eventually they, it helps to soften their nature over time. So, um, this person's afraid of gossip or there's a lot of, go I, actually, this person's not afraid of gossip. They, they don't give a shit. <laughs> wow. Listen to me cursing in this reading. Um, with the, the gossip, there's gossip around this connection. I feel like there's, you do hide it at first. I don't necessarily think this is a third party situation off the bat, like that you guys are in relationships with other people. I think you've left like, or you're in the process of leave, leaving. It's just the, the paperwork that's being worked out. And so you just don't want the judgment from other people. And you, um, so you keep it quiet in between, be, between you guys. There's so much sexual attraction here, okay? Like, both of you. I get butterflies in my stomach when I know I'm going to see you. You are, like, you are a butterfly. You're like a little butterfly over here. Um... What would you do if I came near you? Like, I do feel like there's this definite dance between the two of you. And you're like, you know how to turn it on, pile number two. Don't, don't mess with me. I know you guys know how to turn it on. You know exactly what you're doing. You know that you know how to be hot. You do. It's great. Good for you because you're pulling your soulmate that way. You know, but like, you know, you're, you're looking good. You're lifting your skirt. You're, you know, you're wearing your rouge. I see you. And they see you too. So it's like this subtle, like flirting kind of a dance because both of you are also trying to be respectful of each other's boundaries. This is actually really sweet. Um, cause you are like this, like I said, you guys, this is some kind of difficult time that you're going through and it brings you guys together and you, you're like leaning on each other or something. There's people watching you. I feel like this person has admirers. So do you, by the way. Um, actually, yeah, like, okay, that's why there's gossip and stuff is because you guys both have admirers. And, but there's something about this person's past relationship really doesn't sit right with you. I feel like you really don't like this person's past partner, whether it was a wife or just like a husband or 
a wife or just, you know, just a husband. Um, whether it was a wife or a husband or just like a boyfriend or girlfriend or something or just a casual. There's something that really doesn't sit right with you about this person's past relationship. Maybe their partner cheated on them or something and they were greedy or something like that. But you just really don't like this person's past partner. And I do feel like this person's past partner has people that watch them. Um... I feel like their past partner was possessive or they wanted what this person had without like loving them or something like that. So, um, this, I feel like you meet your person and like on the, the juncture of like some life changing event, you can meet this person and it like puts you up in a tailspin, but you're, you're sad. And then it's like this person helps to like bring you back to your normal self. So that's what I have for you guys, pile number two. Um, I talked for an age, but um, I hope that resonated and all the best to you guys. Please have no fear. Please have no fear. Okay, pile number three. So I feel like there's definitely the energy of work coming through here. Maybe you have been dedicated to your job or this person has. I feel like you guys might meet in the workplace, but um, there's something that about this person that's very mysterious, very confusing. I didn't pull the rest of your things. Hold on, give me one second. Sorry, pile number three. I was just so ready to read this. Um, I'll just take a second. Bada, bada. Okay, so I feel like you, at some point in your life, like I feel like you've been very career focused, you've been building your future, you've been trying to build a bright future, and it's something that you've put a lot of time and effort into. You're a person who I feel like you might be well balanced. I didn't really know which side that I wanted to put each of these on, which was weird because this usually I would have put this here, but something told me not to. But I feel like I'm going to read both of them for both ways. Um, I do feel like there's a lot of sexual attraction between the two of you guys and there is something quite stable about wherever this is that you're meeting. You guys can meet at some kind of work function, um, like a, a work celebration or party, but I feel like, you know, with the Queen of Cups coming out in the middle of you guys, it's very stable. Um, money could possibly be involved, so this could be some kind of like business deal or something, and you don't, you can't really read this person. Um, there's something that is a little bit confusing about this person. Um, I feel like you have a lot of thoughts and wonders, you know, about about them, about their life, that kind of thing. Um, maybe this person, you've heard that they're not quite so faithful in love. This person might have gotten, like, around a little bit. You could have heard something about that. Or you just wonder, you sense that. But this person has a very, like, I want to say domineering kind of a, an energy about them. With Saturn, because you have the moon in Saturn, which is the 10th, 4th house axis. So it's like, there's something about this person's, like, career is important to both of you guys, I feel like. Um, and with the Knight of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck, both of you guys have, could have been, like, building your wealth and building your career in, in a way that didn't leave time for, like, traditional relationships or something. But between the two of you, like, when you meet, I feel like both of you sense that... 
this could be something really special, you know? Um, we have Taurus at the bottom. Like, this is Venus ruled sign, very stable, um, very loving, very sensual. I do feel like you guys have very sensual, very passionate sex. We also have sex on the bottom of the deck here. Oh my gosh, and heart. Sex and heart next to each other. You guys make love a lot. Um, and But you, you do have, like, this competing other other factor here of work, of job, of some kind of structure. This person could have some kind of like, I feel like this person's working really hard um, and they don't have like a lot of time. It makes it difficult for you to see this person. Like it literally could pull them away from you in some way. Like they're very focused on something else, but it's like you always think about each other in the back of your mind. You are showing up as the king of pentacles. Um, I'm not really showing these to the cameras. I don't want to get in trouble, but you know, I said the dick word in this pile too. So we're just <laughs> winging it here. Um, with you showing up as the king of pentacles, I feel like you've built your success in some way. You're feeling very stable. You could have some kind of leadership position here and this person could be just like working really, really hard, something like that. This could be like a contractor or something that you're hiring to do something for you. But, um, you guys meet, you have a lot of ideas between the two of you. You guys vibe on a lot of levels. There's a lot of creative energy. There could be money exchanged here. There could be some kind of like money exchange between the two of you guys. So, but you hide your feelings from this person because I feel like you're professional, you handle your stuff, you know, but, um, you're, you're, you are the empress. This is like, this is very strong female energy over here. This is strong masculine energy too. You're both very strong. Um, definitely like, you know, career minded people. I feel like, um, there is something about the eye contact here that is coming through that makes you guys you I do feel like you guys are kind of communicating through your eye contact definitely like at first but I do feel like at first um this person could cycle you know maybe this person has to travel for work they travel around to different places for their jobs this person strikes me as a contractor of some kind but they could be just working really hard to build up that stability and to build up their their wealth here that's something that's important to both of you and you see a match here with the Taurus um there's also something about like voice and the things that that you say I feel like the both of you are hard to read because you're so focused on other things and it's like you can kind of confuse each other here but you both always look forward oh yep I was with the calendula because it's kind of like the sun card and it's brighten and um I always look forward to seeing you it's kind of what I was getting just from that and like but I feel like sometimes you guys can feel neglected because of like other responsibilities with I don't like how I feel around you lately um, it's like, you, I feel like you both have responsibilities elsewhere, you know? Um, we have, I can, and I want to help you. So I feel like maybe somebody here, like with their job or, or something, um, work is a, is a definite third party variable in this situation. I feel like it's through that because you guys have such a strong relationship with one another. Um, I feel like it wounds you guys and it calls you together in some way here with the Brighton and the Calendula because Calendula is a skin repairing herb. Um, like it's really, really well known for that. Um, with the, what are you hiding? And we need to talk about this. So I feel like maybe like and you're very hot. Like this person over here, you, like, I feel like you're very sexually appealing with the fire card. Maybe both of you are. And a lot of people, like you guys both get attention from a lot of people. And, um, like definitely over here, like you definitely do. Um, and this person takes notice of it. And I feel like you're both attractive. Actually, this person might be very muscly. Um, like they might work out with the athlete here. And also with the Saturn, because Saturn can be quite muscly. And so with the fire, I just feel like you both are very, in a lot of areas of your life, you guys are winning. And so um, it's something that you feel like under the surface, you, you guys are afraid when somebody pulls away. Your person can pull away. They can be very withdrawn. This person needs to have their own space. They like to... Um, this person works a lot, and then they need a lot of alone time to recharge. And... There's a lot of them that feels like secretive or withdrawn from you. And it's something like, cause you're very charismatic. You're very focused on your career, but you're very like forthright and out, out in the front of things. And so I feel like sometimes you might not always stand this, understand this person's nature with the seven of swords coming out between the two of you guys. Maybe you both feel like there's aspects of your relationship that you kind of keep apart here, but this relationship's coming together to heal that with the calendula to like, 
And for you guys to insulate your relationship and kind of, you know, make it a safe space. With the Six of Wands, I feel like you're winning in your career when you meet this person. Like, you're getting some kind of attention for whatever it is that you do. Like, you're very successful. You you And if you're not now, I feel like you become very successful. Um, you could be out in the front. You're very charismatic. You're somebody who's working really, really hard. And this person, I feel like, is a leader. There's something about their speech and their voice. Um, this person could be a public speaker. Um, they definitely are a visionary with that coming through as the light attribute. Capacity to envision what is not yet conceivable to others. Willingness to proclaim a vision without regard for personal gain. I really want to switch these over right now just so I can kind of feel out that that way. Um, yeah, so I really think that your person, there's something quite mysterious and dominating about your person. Um, and I feel like they are... There's something that they're using their voice and their leadership to pioneer or something like that. With the shadow attribute of athlete, misuse of athletic ability for selfish ends, false sense of invulnerability and entitlement. This person could be quite entitled. This person can have a lot of status here. They could travel a lot. They could be really unpredictable. I feel like there is something very unpredictable about your person because like they're super on and they have to be super on in the spotlight. And so it just doesn't leave a lot of energy always open for... Um, for you guys to connect. I feel like it's something that you understand though because you are showing up in work energy as well. You're showing up as very successful in your career. So it's like in a way you both kind of get it and you have to learn how to support each other because there's so much love between you guys with the Queen of Cups coming out in between you guys, right? Um, this person might have had a bit of a nefarious past. Like I feel like this person travels for work. They could have um, developed sexual relationships with people in different parts of the world. And it, it's just a factor here. I'm not saying that this person's a cheater or anything like that. I'm just saying that this person could have gotten around. This person seems very charismatic, very, um, you know, they, they haven't had a, a, a traditional relationship because of the nature of their job. I feel like maybe you have, have been the same way, but I feel like you, maybe you have just not had time to date or something like when you're meeting this person whereas like this person is the opposite and in a way you guys are kind of like balancing each other out but this person withdraws you know with this visionary energy it's like this person withdraws um something like that so with the what are you hiding we need to talk about this um there's something about travel and just um like in the past like each other's pasts that are points of concern and growth in your relationship here. I'm starting to lose my voice pile number three. I'm sorry. Um, but there's something with voice here. I feel like one or both of you is like some kind of public speaker, um, out in the public eye. So this is a very healing relationship. Oh, that's what the synergy is. So, um, like for some of you guys, you, you guys are a safe haven for one another because you're both in the spotlight in the public eye and that's what your relationship is like kind of built on is like you're this person's safe space they're your safe space you know um so this person they see you as like very well connected they see you as um someone who is freeing yourself and others of destructive impulses so um maybe you're a healer of some kind or you're 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 People recognize you as someone who works really hard and is doing something very valuable, you know? Um, possibly for women or businesses or something like that. You bring in like a very healing energy. Your person like notices that about you. But I do feel like there is there is conflict here in not having enough time to like spend to one another. Like you guys are very independent people. And... Um, but you're both very charismatic, happy to be around. There's a lot of good feelings here. I feel like you guys travel a lot together. Um, there's a lot of like romantic gestures, very romantic. Um, but there is a lot of just confusion and haze and competition and those kinds of feelings. But you do end up building a solid foundation together when you guys start focusing on the, um, the private time between you. And that's what really makes this relationship. And then... It makes this relationship really, really great. I feel like you just get to a point over here where you tell this person exactly what you need and um, about, you know, you, you can talk to this person about their travels and things like that. And that's what turns this person into the king of cups and somebody who has a lot of love to give and starts like prioritizing things. Um, 
We have the three of cups and the three of swords. So I, again, I just feel like there's this third variable. I feel like it's work and I feel like it's somebody's past that, um, that needs to be worked through, but you're both learning a lot from each other. I feel like maybe you guys do like you like to dance together or something like that. Um, this is interesting energy. Um, Because maybe this relationship actually starts, you guys are like very casually dating, you know, because you both know that you can't entertain like a traditional relationship, but there's still just a lot of love between you. You both continue to work on your careers and um, maybe you feel that this person pulls away from you at times and this person could feel like you're pulling away. You're very busy with your work. You get a lot of attention, a lot of sexual attention. Um... And it can cause the both of you, that's what's like this something that's keeping me from moving towards you. So like that's kind of the energy that brings us together with the seven of swords. You're both feeling excluded in each other's lives in some way and that you can't fully merge, you know, and it's hard for both of you to tell what that you really want from each other. But you both feel like like this is your person, you know, but I feel like. Your person's definitely hiding that they view you as the empress with the fire card here. The two is the high priestess, that secretive energy. And then the three is that empress energy of like the wife and mother card, you know. And you're very active in the world, but then, um, and you're hiding that you, you're ready, like this person's your like fulfillment in some way. Um, so you're both like, you have to get over that. But then um, I feel like maybe you guys take like a walk and you talk and then you talk maybe you guys oh my gosh I think you guys start a business together and then that's when because you both realize that you're the, this talk one or both of you realizes that this that energy is toxic and that you want to spend quality time with each other your person is afraid of showing weakness this um you know this person's used to being like in the public eye or something like that you might have called this person an ass on multiple occasions, but they do like your booty. And I feel like you guys, like you, maybe you take some time off of work. You go on a vacation together. You guys decide how you're going to work together. If work is so important, you might like start an entrepreneurial venture together. And then you guys start to um, like work, work together because this person thinks you're really beautiful. There's something about your skin that really pulls this in. With this third party, I'm really getting, I'm really getting like either... I, I think it's work. Like, I definitely think it's work. And, but then it's like, perhaps because of that, you both agree to some kind of non-traditional relationship, you know? There is the energy of, I don't know. There's, there's some kind of, we have sabotage. I don't trust myself around you. Wires are getting crossed here. I love what you're doing. So let me just, I want to clarify this because, you know, I'm, I am getting this struggle energy, but it's like, I feel like this relationship could be healing that, you know? Oh, okay. What 
remember what I said at the beginning of this video, but this person could have already had some kind of a relationship with someone before that produced a child. This person could have moved away from this, but it's like they're still heavily involved with like their baby's mama or something like that. I feel like there's a strong feminine figure in your person's life. This could be their actual mother, but I feel like it's a person that they've been with in the past. This person has a lot of deep feelings for you, and I feel like they could have snuck around on this relationship. You might not have even known because I feel like you have a lot going on and you're really busy over here. With the energy of the Three of Swords coming out, there was a betrayal, and I ask what that betrayal was with the Two of Wands. This person, I feel like, stepped out on, on a relationship to be with you in some way, which left you feeling like when you found out about this or when you find out about it, maybe you feel a little trapped, oppressed, um, and and not really sure how to move forward because this person's been so strategic and manipulative and self-centered here. Uh, I'm sorry, you guys. This is just what I'm getting. Um, don't take this on if this isn't, you know, your story. This person, I asked, okay, so what about the love in this situation? We have the Knight of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck up here too. We got the Knight of Pentacles. So it's like this person wants to move forward to you. They might make you promises. This person might make you a lot of promises, but this person could be a philanderer, have a philanderer's past. They're certainly very sexy, very charismatic. Um, and there is something, they're very manipulative with their voice. They're very confusing about it. Yeah. I think I just didn't want to say all this before, but, um, that's when my throat started hurting. Um, this person's wearing a mask. They put on a mask, um, but they're, they are going to do whatever it is that they're going to do. Um, they have a lot of love for you with the Ace of Cups, and it is a pure love, but they also have this very logical side, you know, to them. And they, this person can have like some kind of sex addiction or something, you guys. But this, this comes crashing down because the end result here is like the Seven of Wands, like competition, something like that. This stems from like some deep insecurity on the masculine side. I'm not like, um... I'm not making excuses for this person, but um, look at these cards down here. Look at this masculine figure. You see? Um, there's a judgment. This relationship certainly falls apart. Um, there's some kind of judgment, you know, on your part about this person. This relationship, I'm not going to lie, it looks like it's filled with conflict. There's a lot of materialism here, um, even in the face of your connection, because I see both of you guys kind of focused on work, focused, you're both staying very individual in this relationship. It's kind of non-traditional. The Three of Cups, I, I mean, the Six of Wands and the Six of Pentacles. So I just, what, I, what I'm getting is that this is a third party situation. I don't know if this is just a non-traditional relationship that you guys have agreed upon. I kind of think not on someone's part. On someone's part, it's not. Um, whether it's like their, their former partner. But you are so busy being successful. You have a, you're giving. There's something very philanthropic about whatever it is that you're doing and the business that you create. And to where this person, it's like they're living almost a double life. Like they feel that they can give to two people. They feel like they're in charge. This person is very egotistical. And they paint fantasies. And they create chaos and then try to make sense of it. You're going to think about this and then you're going to release it. You're going to have some kind of realization. You're going to become aware of this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> this is interesting. So what I'm getting, like I said, there's a lot of materialism here, both in the sense of like work um, and and in this relationship and the way that it's this person at least is approaching it. I feel like there's a lot that you don't see because you're so busy. There's something non-traditional about this. Um, with the Hermit, this is the Virgo energy. Virgo, um, the point 
is the point where the soul's journey, like you have, the soul wants to be fully immersed in materialism in order to use that mercurial energy to become aware that that materialism is not working so that it can transcend it and start to let go of some of those material things. And that's what I feel like ultimately this relationship does for you. And you have some kind of new beginning here with the fool. Um, I feel that this there's something that you're not, like, you realize there's something that you're not seeing and that it's this person, like, and their tactics are humiliating. I feel like you grieve this and you have, like, a lot of nostalgic memories and that's when you meet this King of Pentacles person. There might be a lot of gossip around this. Um, there's a lot of travel, a lot of, like, passion that kind of comes through here. Um, and you might build something together and I do feel like this other person is somewhat, like, logical. So this could be, like a first marriage for some of you guys. So what's the advice? Okay. You got to become aware of some toxic patterning here. Um, pay attention to the red flags, pay attention to the little things. Cause this person's telling you who they are in subtle ways. Um, and they're trying to bribe you. This person's trying to bribe you. This person's a sweet talker. You just got to call that nonsense right out. You got to call it right out. Um, I feel like it's a very sexual relationship. Yeah. Um, I feel like this person has like a whole situation here. Um, I'm sorry, pal number three. This is just what's coming through. Um, I'm trying to be better about not getting in the way of the messages that want to come out. My throat is hurting right now because I don't want to say all this stuff. I just am getting it person yeah like I feel like this person has some kind of situation that they step out on because this person has a very sexual nature something you got to really watch for with this this Aries energy um, and it's just asking you to be very observant it's hard for you to be observant because of where you are in your life whenever you're meeting this person I just feel like you're busy um, for some of you you might be in a relationship too I feel like it's with work though um, It's just, it keeps talking about awareness. It keeps talking about this air kind of quality of just no nonsense, cutting it out, calling it out um, situation. And that, I feel like if you if you can do that, then it's bringing in this other energy of someone very spiritual, very stable, and someone that you share like a very strong bond with um, that's maybe more balanced. So um, this is not a punishment. For those of you who are resonating with this, um, it's important to understand that that's not really how the universe works. This is karma. This is some kind of, you're working out some kind of karma in this situation. Like I said, it's not a punishment, but it is something to, with this Virgo energy coming through, it's something to bring your awareness to some kind of habitual way that you are interacting with life um, that's bringing this energy in. Um, and... My voice is going and I feel like actually the universe isn't going to let me elaborate on that any further because this is a lesson you have to live. Um, and it, again, it's you don't have to be punished in this way. It's not a punishment. There is, um, you, you can move this energy, you can move this energy, but it's just saying like this person's a manipulator. Very, very much. We had the emperor and the king of wands and we had the devil card. This person knows what they're doing. They're slick and they're sly. You know, and there it's like they're in a way they're using um, they're shallow. This person's shallow. They're able to put like a shallow facade on, you know, and it's like I feel like you're not really that worried about it when you first meet this person because you don't have time for stuff anyways. But then it just kind of grows into something. This person might want a piece of your success in some way. And um, but there's a lot that they're keeping to themselves and they're putting on this front of like being quite loving. But I feel like you have some alarm bells going up. I'm so sorry, pal number three. This is the kind of stuff that I don't want to post. I, it's like makes me not want to even post because I don't want you to be angry at me. Um, but that's my spiritual journey, I suppose. So anyways, I'm going to leave that there. Um, bye.